story about the sixth edition of the Magical Kenya uh, Travel Expo that is set to take place between the 12th and the 14th of October this year. And uh, we are now joined by the acting chief executive officer of uh, Kenya's Tourism Board to now talk to us about what exactly is happening in the tourism industry at the moment and how is Kenya marketing tourism today. Uh, Jacinta, thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Business Today. Um, today is quite an important day for you, uh, but what should we expect to start with at the Travel Expo that is coming up in October? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, for the Expo this year, we have um, a very interesting theme that uh, is called Tourism for All, Explore Endless Travel Possibilities. Mm -hmm. Why tourism for all? Because we believe that tourism should be able to achieve its very principle of cultural integration and reaching out to various economies in the, in, in the country. Mm -hmm. So it should be able to go beyond tourism. So what we are looking at is really fronting the sustainability theme, being able to ensure and confirm that Kenya is set apart in terms of competitiveness because of the sustainability uh, projects that uh, we have in the tourism sector. Mm -hmm. uh, this way, we'll be able to have various pavilions that showcase sustainability uh, projects in the tourism sector that have an appeal to the growing trend of travelers, because we know 43% of our travelers would be willing to pay a premium mm -hmm. to travel to a destination that has social and environmental consideration in their facility or in their process mapping. So that for us is, is, is very unique and it follows the recent statement by the country led by HE the president about conservation and our efforts in taking care of our heritage. All right, and you know, we have seen uh, tourism starting to go on a recovery path, I think, since October of 2015. Um, but how best are we marketing tourism locally? Uh, the domestic continues to be very, very important for Kenya. Kenya Tourism Board mm -hmm. in here. Apparently, we are running called Twende Usha mm -hmm. This is a call to residents like to visit all the areas, regions mm -hmm. that are very attractive and diverse. So we continue to encourage Kenyans to move in the country and enjoy the heritage because this tourism um, uh, product not be in one area. We have all the development currently through the county government, the mm -hmm. players, product owners are launching products around the country. Mm -hmm. So we should be able to go around and, and take advantage of this uh, diversity and really um, enjoy the tourism product. And all right, so you have also previously mentioned uh, that you are seeking to increase the number of beds to about by an extra 30,000, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but how is that going so far? Um, the current uh, bed and the domestic market mm -hmm. is at uh, 50. And these are figures that from its survey. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have a target as a tourism this year to achieve 55% of our bed night, and we believe we are going to be able to achieve this. Right. Okay, and of course we are now looking at the numbers. I do not want really to dig much deeper into them, but um, we are seeing the regional markets as well uh, starting to improve. Ethiopia as well, uh, you know, has posted about 51% growth uh, yeah. in terms of arrivals, but how are the other countries doing? Um, the other is Uganda and mm -hmm. Russia averaging at about mm -hmm. MKT for us like to increase intra-African travel because it is a show that one of the key in the national in the corridor initiative it is a is, is a project not just yeah it is a show for the big tripartite states of Uganda mm -hmm. so it is in the calendar of the so we are using to ensure that our business come together, do business together, and take advantage of the of tourism visa and also the free movement by the citizens of the three countries using IDs where you don't need a passport, Uganda and Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So this for us 
key because we want to leverage on the resilience of this market really growing. All right. And, uh, you know, for a long time, Kenya has been looking at wildlife tourism as the key uh, tourism attraction or tourist attraction. Um, but, you know, we've come a long way now and there are quite a number of other tourist attractions that Kenya has. Which are some of them? Uh, especially for the regional market of Africa, we are looking at newer segments that mm -hmm. we haven't promoted in the traditional markets of Europe, US. Yeah. Shopping for it. Um, 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 or even come here to go, tourism. Mm -hmm. The very bare fact that Africans look at Kenya as a very economical development, technological development. And mm -hmm. we find that we have more to offer than offering uh, the, the traditional markets. The East Africans think very clearly in the this year. They mm -hmm. want up Kenya, they want night shop, they want to be able to ordinary Kenya go out you know, in the in the various Kenyans gathered so that they can enjoy uh, the hospitality and the warmth of the Kenyan. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Jacinta. We appreciate the time taken to talk to us about uh, how the tourism industry is doing in regard to marketing it. I uh, wish we could talk more about it, but I guess there's always a next time. Now, passengers were stranded for, I think, the better part of this morning at Lekoni Crossing Channel after a Lekoni Ferry MV Kuala developed mechanical problems, leaving over 1,400 passengers and attended to. Passengers blamed the management of the ferry for the slow response to the crisis as it was just a few meters away. The ferry was carrying uh, only passengers who were headed to different working stations within and outside Mombasa. The passengers are now asking the government to buy new ferries or come up with better means uh, to this seemingly unending crisis. According to eyewitnesses, some of the passengers uh, had to dive and swim across as the rest waited to, uh, in panic to be rescued. Last year in May, um, we did see the MV Kuala as well that stalled midstream, forcing passengers to jump to safety. The recurring problem, uh, problems rather saw a change of management earlier this year. <laughs> Hiyo ferry naona matatizo ni mlango maana tumekuja mara ya kwanza ikakataa kushukisha mlango. Tukarudi hivi ikazunguka tukaja tena ikakataa kushukisha mlango. Sasa tumeketi hapo karibu ni masaa matatu au manne. Kwa hiyo tumehangaika lakini tuwashukuru. Tuwashukuru tumetoka salama sote. Tuwashukuru. Ninatoa tu maombi kwa Kenya Ferry. Kama inawezekana kwa nini mali hapa hapajengwi kifaa cha cha sawasawa kama daraja walikuwa wanasema? Kuliko kukojea dongo kundu, dongo kundu wase nende miaka mingapi, sasa mkibaki ya mekaa na dongo kundu, haiku wako, raisi wetu, uh, uhuru, na yupo, dongo kuu, hakuna. Kwa hivyo sifadhali tuwekewe hapa feri, ni tuwekewe hapa uh, daraja, ili iwe rahisi na mna hii. Now, earlier we did ask an Twitter question. Uh, do you think the anti-IABC protests are disrupting businesses around the country? Do you think the anti-IABC protests are disrupting businesses? And uh, quite a number of tweets coming through. Victor Malala is saying anti-IABC protests are disrupting businesses, but we need them because we do not have faith in the IEBC and uh, Josh Onse is saying yes because the constitution has given all Kenyans the right and freedom for demonstration and uh, we're having data boy who is saying of course but who is to blame there is a question you're asking and uh, Jakat Wenger is saying the question should read who between the protesters and the police is disrupting businesses interesting and uh, Simon Siale is saying indeed the major towns are losing a lot something needs to be done fast and uh, can't run my business in town today because of the anti-IABC protest so uh, quite a number of views we could go through let me just read one more here from Jimmy Gakir who is saying yes the demos have a severe impact on our economy keeping in mind uh, Monday is open day for business that is quite disrupting we'll go through some of your tweets uh, before the end of the show. We'll now take a short break, more to come. We will be speaking to Duncan Owiti, who is one of 
The Kenyans are trying to help Kenyans living in the diaspora make meaningful investments back home, and that is in the real estate sector. Do stay with us.